you so much for joining me. My name is Helen and in today's video I'm going to be talking through a few different easy side hustle ideas. I feel like everyone has a side hustle by this point. It's become hugely popular especially with lockdown and everyone just wanting to express creative outlet or build their wealth in a new way or just yeah generally add to their nine to five income and I have certainly tried a few different side hustles over the years even back in university to kind of support myself through university I had a number of different side hustles right through to right now where I have a normal nine to five and then I work on some things outside for example YouTube so I thought today we could run through a few different ideas of how you can earn some extra money outside of a normal nine to five job and also rate them in terms of how easy they are to set up what sort of money you can actually expect to make from them and then also how much time is going to be needed in order to run these side hustles because it's all well and good setting up a number of different side hustles and having your fingers in lots of different pies but if you actually need to spend more time than you have available on them to make them run and make them successful then they're obviously not going to work for you so I thought it'd be much more helpful to work through how much time you're actually going to need to dedicate to them are they that easy to set up what sort of skills are you going to need and ultimately how much money are you going to make? Is it going to be thousands of pounds, 10 pounds, pennies, that sort of thing. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep watching. So the first easy side hustle idea is to sell a product online. Now this falls into two separate buckets, right? Firstly, you have selling a physical product and secondly, you having selling an electronic product. Now I don't really have much experience in the electronic side. This could be things like an ebook or a course, but I found that you kind of need to have a social media following in order to sell these sorts of products. Or you could be selling, you know, a spreadsheet on Etsy, that sort of thing. But I don't really have much product uh, like experience in this area. So I'm going to leave this one to the experts. If you want to find out more information, definitely do some research here on YouTube. So many people sell electronic products online that have really great experiences. So fully recommend searching for it. The area that I have experience in is selling a physical product online. Now, there's a number of different products that you can go for. And of course, the first thing that you need to do is think of the product that you want to sell. Is it going to be a handmade item? Is it going to be something that you're just ordering offline, maybe from Alibaba or AliExpress, that sort of thing? Or are you creating it fully yourself? You've designed it, you've worked up the product materials, you've gone to a factory, you've asked them to create it for you, you're ordering it from the factory and then you're going to get delivered to you to then sell online. So there's a number of different channels and obviously there's a number of different price points. Handmade is probably the cheapest and easiest to access. Then secondly, ordering online via a factory, so Alibaba, AliExpress, that sort of thing. And then finally, the probably most expensive is to design and create something completely from scratch and work with the factory to create it yourself. Now, if you're doing the handmade option, in terms of places to sell your products, I would definitely say check out Etsy. It's a really, really great platform for anyone that is trying to sell handmade products. Now, of course, there are some fees attached, but in terms of setup, it's actually super easy to set up on Etsy. You just need a banner image, an icon, and you're ready to go. You just load in your products and they're available. And the brilliant thing about Etsy is that there are already people shopping on Etsy so that they can search and see your products. And it's very easy in terms of management then you just, as soon as you receive an order, you take it to the post office and off it goes. So that's a really great way to start selling products online with little to no entry requirements. You don't need to put down large sums of money. You can literally start making products today and have them live on Etsy selling to customers in the same day. Secondly is ordering a product from AliExpress or Alibaba. Now, you will need to spend some time when you're setting this business up, doing your research into not only the product and the quality of the product, but also the factory. Now, AliExpress and Alibaba both allow you to buy samples of products from the productions that they work with. So you can order, you know, one or two items of a product that you've seen. Maybe you wanna start selling hair clips, for example. So you wanna start selling a range of hair clips. You want them to be eco-friendly as possible because obviously you're ordering from other countries. You can select that you wanna only purchase from factories in Europe, maybe. You only wanna be purchasing products that are vegan or you know certified XYZ you can filter on Alibaba and AliExpress 
you can make filter choices and make sure that the products that you're looking at are ticking all the boxes that you want. Then I would fully recommend spending about £10 to order some samples. Every factory offers samples, you can either direct message them or you can just click the box and order them yourself, pretty much like when you're ordering off Amazon. Now. This is really important because you want the product to be really good quality, but you also want to make sure that it's competing against all the other products that are out there. For example, with hair clips, there's a lot of people selling hair clips online. Type hair clips into Amazon and there are going to be so many options on there. So you want to make sure that yours are absolutely in line with the expectation of the market, that the pricing is in line with what you can then sell it on to make a profit. That sort of thing all comes in when you're setting up your business. Now, of course, if you're selling something like hair clips, you can obviously make your own website. You can go on Shopify, Wix again and make your own website as you can with any of these options. Now, what I would say is you don't have to be a coder to make your own website. Shopify and Wix have a number of different templates that you can use if you want to set up your own website. However, you could also go on Etsy and there are people on there that have pre-made templates that they've made themselves that you can purchase. Just put in your own images and off you go. So it's super easy to set up your website. But the setup time-wise, I think in the beginning, definitely comes from finding the right product, doing your research, ordering some samples, checking out the quality, that sort of thing. And then finally is the big daddy of products. If you're gonna create it yourself, design it yourself, things like that, this can definitely take a lot of time when it comes to setting up the business. Now again, you can just use your own Shopify website, anything like that. Setup won't be long in that sense. It's gonna be long in terms of creating and designing a product. So I and my friend launched a company called One Mile London. We designed our trousers from scratch, their menswear trouser range. If you don't know much about them, I'm gonna be posting a video soon talking through a day in the life of running a small business and that's gonna be about our trouser company and I'll also put a link down below. But basically we started from complete scratch and we worked with one of our friends that helped us design the trousers to be the best performing trouser we could find. We then had to look for materials to use, so what sort of trouser material we were gonna use, this hybrid sports chino trouser that we were trying to create it wasn't just shelf ready made we had to design it from scratch and that took us about a year being completely honest and then outside of that you've also got to set up all your uh, website your shipping everything like that so the things that we had to set up were our shopify website we had to set up a account with Royal Mail, we had to obviously register our business, we had to set an account with DHL, we had to set up all our emails to do customer service but also speak to factories, we had to set up contact with a factory, we had to source everything, you know, it's a, it's a long list of to-dos when you're setting up your own product completely from scratch. So if this is a side hustle, beware that the time that you're going to need for that one is a lot more than the other two options. Now the important bit, how much can you actually earn? What sort of income can you expect from these three different options of selling products? So firstly with Handmade Etsy, I did so much research into how much people make on Etsy and it really does vary. Some were saying, you know, 50 pounds a month, right through to someone who said 15,000 pounds over a three month period. So I do think it depends on how many products you're selling on there, how much time you're putting into your shop, what you're making as well, what how popular it is at the time, that sort of thing. But you know, your outgoings are gonna be pretty small when it comes to a handmade product. Again, depending on what the handmade product is, but it can be pretty small, you can keep them to a minimum. You do need to consider what you need to spend on materials, what you need to spend on packaging when you're gonna ship it, how much postage is gonna be, and then also the Etsy fees. Now, my experience with Etsy is that the fees are pretty low. You have to pay when you're listing a new product. You don't have to pay any maintenance fees, but you pay a small fee as well when you sell a product and if you wanna run any ads, that sort of thing. So it's quite easy to manage and you can definitely keep your outgoings low, but anywhere between 50 pounds to 15,000 pounds isn't very helpful, but I would expect kind of at that lower end of that, depending on how much you're charging for your products. Now, where I have experience with Etsy is actually in this middle section. It really does vary, but I would expect around 100 pounds, I would say every single month. If you're selling an individual product on your own website or you're really driving it with marketing on social media, TikTok for example, you can definitely make a lot of money in this area. And again, your outgoings can be relatively low. Now what I would say is if you're purchasing a product directly from a factory, you do have to tend to buy in bulk. So if you're thinking about it, the cost can add up quite quickly 
quickly, but the product cost might be quite low in itself. So definitely a few things to weigh up there. Again, you have to think about what you're gonna ship it in, how much it's gonna cost to post, is it a heavy product, is it gonna cost a lot more, or is it quite light, is it gonna be relatively cheap? And then also you have to think about costs on the actual site itself. You could also just have your own website you know there's lots of different marketplaces out there that you can sell via you could also just sell on instagram and sell via dms or sell on tiktok and sell via dms so you, there's lots of different channels that you can use but with every new channel there's more management you need to put more time in it so it's definitely again weighing up that time need and then finally how much can you expect to make on the much larger created yourself but created in a factory bespoke much more professional format of selling a product online and again <laughs> it's not very great guideline but i would say it depends how much it costs you in the beginning. If you're investing 10, 20,000 pounds into creating, designing, and launching a product, you then need to factor that into when you're selling it into your profit margin and understand how you're gonna make money on top of that. You're also gonna to wanna to understand how fast you're gonna be selling through these products, whether you need to give that 20,000, 10,000 pounds back, um, so yeah, again, profit is quite hard to measure in these areas if you're launching a brand new product. But what I would say for some guidance on how much you can expect to bring in, particularly from products that are either already created from a factory or that you're designing yourself but fall into a certain niche, do some reviews on the general market itself, obviously, before you launch. Make sure that there is some profit in the product, whether you're spending too much or spending too little. Make sure that the profit margin is adequate enough for you to make some money on top. The second easy side hustle idea that I think works really, really well alongside a nine to five job is local service businesses. Now, this is something that I did throughout uni. I found that the easiest way to make a bit of money and manage the time myself was by running a small business. I wouldn't even say it was a small business, but providing services in the local area. And for me, that was dog walking. So I put an advert in Gumtree at the time, advertising my availability to walk dogs at lunch time in the morning or in the evening depending on what people needed and I found that it was not only a brilliant way to exercise throughout the week as a super lazy university student but I also found that it was a really great way to earn some money meet new people get to see some dogs while I was at university as well because I absolutely love dogs at the time I was volunteering at a local dog shelter so I think it did help to have some experience on my dog walking CV I would say if you're in a city now I would fully recommend getting some insurance so that if anything happens while you're on a dog walk, it doesn't then fall to you. And it was very easy for me to set up. I didn't set up a website. I didn't have any social media at the time. I am talking about 10 years ago, which sounds really crazy, but now I would probably run some social media. One thing that I saw that was really great is a girl on TikTok that does Day in the Life of a Dog Walker, and she shows you all the dogs that she walks throughout the day. And it's obviously advertising her dog walking services whilst also introducing you to some really cute dogs and she's got a really great tiktok following now so i would definitely use social media to promote your services there's also a girl locally to me here who does dog walking and she puts it in our facebook group we've got a um, local facebook group that everyone in the area is part of and she puts an advert out every few months just advertising her services and it's a really great way to earn some money now if you're in a city you can charge up to kind of 15 pounds an hour for this but I think I was charging about eight pounds an hour. Maybe that was why I was really popular because I was undercutting the market. <laughs> but I would say that providing a local service, of course it doesn't have to be dog walking, is a really great way to um, make some money on the side. So in terms of setup, I would say that this is a very easy side hustle to set up. You don't need to you know, source anything or do anything like that. You just need to put an advert out there in some shape or form, whether that's creating a social media profile or putting an ad somewhere. It's something for you to put out there. You don't need to create a website. You don't need to put any money into it. It just needs time. Now, in terms of time that's needed to run the side hustle, this is one where you do basically trade time for money. It's not gonna be creating you money while you're not working on it. Of course, you need to walk the dogs in my case to earn the money. And it was very much earning X amount in this time. Now, this is something that I think 
does work really well if you are trying to earn some money on the side because it does mean that you can manage your time really really easily once i'd given that dog back and walked out that front door i didn't then have to think about managing that as a side hustle really you know my advert was doing all the hard work for me yes you have to manage customer service in terms of people messaging you about walking their dog but other than that setup and time management was very minimal it was just the time needed to do the actual task itself so income potential from a service local service business well from experience from my dog walking experience i was earning as i said around eight pounds per hour for every dog that i walked and at my peak i was walking around six seven dogs at a time and i could find myself earning quite a good amount even if i was walking them throughout the week i could earn up to you know 500 pounds a month from this side hustle but it was it does take up a lot of time and obviously as a uni student you can manage your time a lot easier i didn't have a nine to five i just needed to study on the side but there are lots of different options for local service businesses that can earn you around the same amount up to 500 pounds or more per month you could do window cleaning you could do cleaning in general food delivery services, Uber, that sort of thing in your area, or you can advertise any sort of services on any of your local Facebook groups. There's loads of different options out there and I'm sure if you go onto your local Facebook group and check it out, there'll be someone advertising something that you can think of, another service that you could come up with to offer along the side. So fully recommend it for a good income of up to 500 pounds every single month. Right. Now the third easy side hustle idea does not require you to speak to a single soul. Some people just don't want to do side hustles that mean you have to reach out to people or you have to speak to people that you might not want to. So this one is tailored for those people and that is online surveys. Now online surveys do get quite a bad rap. They don't, they're not really respected because you can't earn quite as much money as you can in other areas. But when you're sat on a tube for an hour or you're on a train for an hour and you don't have much to do and you're just scrolling aimlessly through Instagram, why not earn some money from your phone? Now, when I first became unemployed in 2020 during the pandemic and no one was hiring, I certainly found that surveys were a really great way to earn a small bit of extra money, just a bit of spending money, to be honest, whilst, you know, keeping myself entertained because there's no setup, there's no requirements really for any of these surveys. I mean, some of the survey sites you will need to put in some information, but the two apps that I still use regularly to do some online surveys to make a bit of extra money, I didn't really need to do anything in terms of setup. I just logged in like a normal social media platform or an email or something like that. And all I needed was an email and a PayPal account because that's how they pay you. Now, the only one that I still like to use online is called User Testing, and that's a website I fully recommend checking out, and I've done a review of it before on my channel. But the two apps that I use, so the first app is called Atapul, and the second app is called Influence. Now, don't be expecting to make thousands of pounds on these apps. They are surveys for pennies. If I click on Atapul now, I can see what surveys are available. There's one that takes one minute and you earn one penny. There's one that's 17 minutes and you earn one pound 25. There's one for 46p here. There's one for 52p here. But you can see, hopefully you can see that, there are loads of different options available for me to do right now and earn a bit of money. And then it just goes into your balance page and you can request a payment to either a gift card, PayPal, Revolut if you use a Revolut card. Um, so there's lots of different ways, you know, to pay out of this app. And I think you need to just make about three pounds before you can pay it out. So I use obviously PayPal to pay out. And last month I made nine pounds 76. The month before I made three pounds 10. That's not that great. The month before that I made eight pounds 33. The month before that, oh no, the same month, I also withdrew £7.23. So there's, you know, around £10 a month from this app, which I think is pretty good seeing as I don't even take care, like consideration when I'm doing it. I didn't have to do any sort of setup and I really enjoy doing them. They're really simple, easy to follow surveys, just asking your opinion on certain topics. Now the second one, influence, is a little bit different. You do have to face to camera, film yourself answering about a topic. And annoyingly, I've done them all, so there's actually no topics here for me to choose one, but it might be asking, what do you prefer, Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Or what was the last thing that you purchased online and tell us about your experience, that sort of thing. They're really easy questions. And you basically then, so you can see all the ones that I've answered here. 
and then you send a little, I don't know if you can see that, it's just me talking, but what brand have you been disappointed by recently? You send a minute clip of yourself answering the question and explaining it in a little bit more detail and you send off and you get paid a pound, I believe, a pound per survey, which is really good. So at the moment you can see I've got nine pounds sat there because it literally takes you know, a few minutes to answer. Now, some of them are 25p, some of them are 63p, some of them are 50p, and quite a few of them are a pound, I find. So you can actually just not do the 25p ones and just do the pound ones or just the 63p ones. I find if it's 63p, it means they're gonna send you a few in a row, so you can earn kind of three pounds, four pounds, that sort of thing. But in terms of how much I've made from this app, so in January, for example, I made £34 in January. So clearly I had a lot of time sat where I could just answer them. And in a lot of them you can see I'm literally in a hoodie and don't care and just filming myself. So that's not too bad. Both apps together you can earn about 40 quid pretty good. Now, if you want to check these out, I'll leave links down below and you actually get some free money when you sign up. And so do I. So in terms of affiliate marketing, these two apps are really great as well. I don't earn loads off them. I don't think many people click through my link on them usually, but I think they're really great. So I'm going to shout about them in videos like this. And that's it, that's three easy side hustles that you can try out today, start looking into today to make some serious cash in some options. Now, as I said, I've tried and tested all of these options and I still use them today to make a bit of money on the outside. There are some other ways that you can make money, you know, great side hustles, but they tend to need a social media following. So maybe I'll do another video much like this one, talking about what side hustles you can have if you do have a bit of a social media following or a lot of a social media following. But thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you soon. Bye.